This video is about these battery trays that you can make to order. You just basically type in your sizes, it will print whatever you want. And this is a, it's based on a script I wrote that is included in the description down below. And I originally featured it on Big Clive Live, the live stream channel, but thought it'd be quite good here. For reference, if you've not seen the Big Clive Live channel, it's not so tentacle, it's more relaxed. Uh, imagine a pub with us gathered round at that, a table in it, that's more or less what it's like. So don't go there with high expectations of quality. However, let me talk about this script. This is an 8x8 tray, holds 64 AA cells. You can just go right into the middle, you can just grab one cell and pick it out the middle. It's very versatile and secure. It holds all the cells securely and stops them rolling about all over your bench. It also lets you keep them in order so you could have the charged ones at the back or the uncharged ones at the front or have different coloured trays for different charge states. Uh, it can be made to print any dimension of uh, number of cells and any diameter of cell. So it can be used for, well, any cylindrical object, really. So I'm going to walk you through how to use the script and how to generate your STL files that you can then 3D print on your printer. So I'm just going to grab that script right now. One moment, please. So here's what the script looks like, and rather than trying a screen capture, which is just not as convenient, uh, since I can actually do doodle in this and point to specific things, I'm just going to show you off as a print off. So here is the what you're going to get in OpenSCAD. Now, OpenSCAD is open source software. It's free to download. It's a mathematical marvel. And by using a text script, you can specifically design things and allow computations uh, so that it can actually create quite complex multiple dimensional arrays of things like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy and paste the text from the description down below and it will all be clearly marked out. You're going to copy it into the design window of OpenSCAD. And when you do that, um, you're going to be able to adjust several variables. Width, in the case of this at set five, is the number of cups this way. Height is the number of cups that way. Depth is the actual depth of cups themselves. Diameter is the internal diameter of these cups. That's the you just basically measure one of your batteries or whatever you're going to put into it and allow a slight margin um, and that gives you the diameter. Thickness is the thickness of the wall around that. In this case, it's set to one millimetre, which to be honest, in this case is ample. If you had items that needed spaced a bit further apart, you could incre increase the thickness of the wall and it would keep them separate uh, further apart from each other. And the base, just because I could, is the thickness of the plastic at the base here uh, underneath this uh, tray. I just felt it was useful to have that as a separate variable. Once you've typed those in, uh, noting, be very careful because you're actually typing into code here, be careful you don't delete the little uh, semicolons here, they're quite important. If you ever get a little red dot next to it when you try uh, rendering that, uh, it's usually because you've missed the semicolon. Just note that, it's very easy to do that. And you can only adjust these variables here. Do not touch anything else. You will absolutely break it. But once you've done it, you've got a choice of some buttons up here or buttons down here. If you look at the little box with the double arrow on it, the little double chevron, that lets you get a quick preview of what you're going to get. And then you can actually scroll and pan around this. It's good to play with that open SCAD. It's a very interesting piece of software. Once you've got it how you like it, Press the little box with the hourglass on it, and depending on the processing capability of your computer, it'll take a while, it'll render it out into the STL form, so it's going to take a wee bit longer. I'm using an old banger laptop, so it can take quite a while, but uh, with a modern computer, it should happen quite quickly. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward design. It's only when you get up to like 8x8 eight eight or bigger that it starts taking a bit longer. But you can try this. See if you, you aren't quite sure of if it's going to be a fit or not. You can set this to width one and height one and it will just simply make a single cup. Maybe you just want a single cup and it will just create that with the appropriate sizes and it lets you just try things for size. But once you've built it using the cube with the uh, hourglass in it and it takes that extra time and renders it in its final form, press the STL button and it will save it as an STL file then and you can name it and uh, also, well, you've got the usual controls. You can press the disk if you just want to save your changes to this. And once you've got your STL file, put it into your preferred slicer for your 3D printer and you can then print off battery holders to your heart's content. 
Let me know if you find this useful. Uh, let me know if you can think of improvements. Though, to be honest, I think I've covered most things in this. And, uh, yeah, let me know how you get on in the description, well, in the comments down below.